we were talking about data uh, segmentation and understanding our yeah. audience base, right? And advertisers getting smarter and smarter at targeting the one individual that might be highly relevant. Now, this is a wonderful story that I, I always tell people. So uh, advertisers with big budgets, right? The Unilevers of the world, the PNGs of the world and stuff, they have enormous budgets. They spend massive amounts of money in, in terms of understanding what their audience does, mm. you know, understanding who their target market are is across their entire ecosystem of products, which is thousands of SKUs, right? Um, I mean, if PNG and and Unilever tomorrow open their own e-commerce, they would be bigger than Amazon. This is they they incredibly you know enormous, but um, they've spent so much money, right, getting really smart at understanding who that user is and all that kind of stuff. And they, they've targeted them, they've set up the right messages, the call to actions, they've identified these micro moments that Google calls, you know, life events and stuff. And then that person goes to the point of sale and they've just put on, you know, maybe they want a head and shoulders as an example. And they're at the point of sale. There's this other advertiser or, a, you know, a promotional stand that goes 50% off or whatever. Yeah. And all they spent was a couple thousand dollars at that moment of truth and you need to leave it just lost. Yeah, because you're not loyal to the, to the you're not loyal. To the right. shop. So even though that ad, the advertiser understands me to you know what my kids' names are yeah. or, or what, what school they go to, which hopefully not, um, but um, that moment of truth they've just lost out on. So, so they, you, pers they, persu they they persuaded you to buy the product, but they lost out in, in the final moment. Yeah. So now this then presents an interesting route on. So we're going down this data privacy and ownership route with Web3. So yep. now we are taking the power back as an individual, a user. We say we own the data, we own ourselves, and we want the fair, equal exchange of value. Yeah. Right? Now this will come through a wallet, right? So we've got a wallet and we, we connect to different websites and metaverses and all that kind of stuff. And that wallet has a transactional history. People can then start seeing what my actual economic propensity to spend might be. Now, this is also something, there's a massive caveat here, because maybe I'm using a burn wallet, yeah. or maybe I'm not using my main wallet, yeah. and you look at it and I've only got 0.5 ETH on that wallet, then you've assumed that oh, he's not, maybe not the right buyer for mm -hmm. me, right? So uh, we've gone down the same route, the same mistakes of trying to personalize this whole experience for someone that might be built on the wrong metrics. Yeah. Right, so that whole personalized ad thing, you know, the minority report when he's running down the, you know, the, the subway or something, and all those those ads, the newspapers are hitting him in a very individualistic way. That was programmatic media. Yeah, that was what we were trying to achieve for programmatic yeah. media. What this looks like in the metaverse is probably hopefully and very hopefully different. So I don't think it's going to be necessarily important to have the personalization. Uh, sorry, to, to, because of the wallet, maybe the discrepancy or the, the misleading data that might be available. Yeah, it's both di more difficult to make it personalized, right? And it's but it's also there's like this small thing about it that web free shouldn't be uh, surveillance capitalism but, again. But, once but, again, but go back to the, the Unilever example. So, do we really want to go down this personalization route? Spend billions of dollars trying to get smarter and smarter and miss yeah. out on the moment of no. truth. But what do you do then? Enhance the experience. Yeah. Invite that person into your space. By me t being a bank and setting up a virtual bank store, I don't want to spend more time with my bank. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> When last did you go into a physical bank? No, never. Okay. Why would you want to go spend time in a like a digital yeah, bank? A physical bank, no. But that's that's pre pretty interesting actually because right now the 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 commercial or the advertisement is a video or some text or something flat that represents the thing that you're watching. Mm -hmm. It could also be sponsored content for for YouTuber, right? Mm -hmm. But it's still like the same uh, format as the the thing you're experiencing yeah. in the metaverse or in the more immersive experience. Yeah. An advertisement could be anything. Absolutely, any 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 surface top. Yeah. So Think, it, could, yeah. it could actually be like an uh, experience. It could be a completely new experience, but I hope it also doesn't become a NASCAR uh, experience. So what, what do you mean? A NASCAR experience, like you know the, uh, the, the car with a billion different brands yeah. on it, right? Yeah. And I hope it's not going to be that, because then we've sold out. Yeah. Right? We've sold out it once again, and that's then a missed opportunity for all of us. And you have to look very carefully to find the right... Uh, exactly, right, local. exactly. But I think it, we're, we're advertising in the physical world is, is difficult because of its cost implication. Yeah. One of the biggest um, um, or most expensive product or, or, or ad placements you can do is actually billboard ads out in the real world because yeah. of the infrastructural support, the duration of, of these contract commitments and all that kind of stuff. Then also TV because of the production and all that stuff. You go now, take a step back into what might be credited in the digital world is that it's quick to produce, 
You can replicate anything or you can stylize anything, you can design anything, you can create anything at that moment of truth. So it completely takes away the physics once again in terms of what advertising might be. So yes, it could be a banner, it could be something else, right? It could be say, um, and I mean there are companies out there that are making um, ATM-like machines in the virtual world where you go and you buy NFTs and now there's an example of a physical NFT, uh, yeah. I don't know if you saw that, the, the vending machine that was I think in London somewhere which I think is a strange concept but we'll see how that goes. <laughs> um, but, but now say that that unit that you're going to buy your NFT because that's the point, right? So you can't just be, it can't be completely random, there has to be law, L-O-R-E on how I function within this reality, yeah. right? So maybe there's the stand where I go to buy my NFTs. Maybe that, for a moment, can act as an interstitial, which is basically like a, uh, a point between myself and the purchase. Yeah. Maybe that stand then becomes a Coca-Cola pop-up. Yeah, that makes sense. Right?